Hi, this is Lance and I'm going to give some tips on how to quickly build HyperDocs in Google Docs. And so these are just four quick steps that you need to think about including. So that way when you are creating collaborative spaces or if you're having students go through a set of materials, then you have those instantly built. So first things first, the first tip I have to give is make sure you use tables. And you can use even tables within tables. And you need to think a little bit about what the table should look like. If this is going to be collaborative, I need to think about how much space I'm giving. Or if it's not collaborative, I need to think about how many cells I'm going to need to insert different pieces of information. So I am going to make this one collaborative. And I'm just going to go a couple of columns here, or a couple of rows, I should say. And then I'm going to reserve this one for directions. And then in this one, you can insert tables inside tables. I love tables and tables. And by doing that, then I'm creating learning spaces. You want to think a little bit about how many students you want to respond in each space when they're together. So I'm going to have four students respond and I want them to add their names. So I'm going to make this five rows because I need a, some column headers too. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this column here, name. I'm going to make this one response and I could even put the question there if I wanted to and then I can slide this over like this okay and then within these tables I highly recommend using color colors can indicate what group they are and so here's the orange group I can make the responses in green so I'll make the paint bucket green here and I can make the response the name boxes in red like so so now I have some nice name and response boxes for them to indicate what they want. Now, the other thing that's nice is once I make one for one group, I can copy it and then go down to a second page and paste it in. Now I have two of those and I could just change the color for the next group. I could even do three groups that way. I'll make this one yellow. I'll go down here and do a third group, paste it in. And I'll make this one just for fun. We'll make this one blue. There we go. So now I have three groups all set up and ready to go based off of color, orange, yellow, and blue. The next tip I give is I love to use the Google Drawings feature within Google Docs to create directions. Graphics are important. So I go up to insert, go to drawing, and here is where I can insert shapes, text boxes, images, and even word art. Word art is located here and your shapes here's some line options shape options right here text boxes here and then image icons here where you can actually search from the images to search google drive or do a google search so lots of different options so i'm going to go ahead and start building some directions right now Something else that I can do is I can grab graphics from other websites. So I'm going to go ahead and just nab this one with my Chromebook using Control, Shift, and the Window button. And it gives me some crosshairs. And I can select what I want. And I'll hit Copy, go back to my Google Drawing here within the HyperDoc, and it pastes it right in. I need to give credit where credit is due, though, and make sure that I do cite my sources. So I need to make sure that I copy this like so, and type in here with a text box and say, so. Okay, once I have my graphic all done, then I can hit save and close. And I wanna make sure that I link this graphic all together. So when I go click on it, then it gives me the link icon. I need to copy my address from my source that I'm wanting people to visit. And I hit the link icon and paste it in like so. And I apply it. Okay, so instantly the students have the ability to click on this and visit the website and respond in their space.
Okay, and that is my third tip is using links. Make sure that you link resources. Make sure that you, if you have more than one resource, if you have a section here and then maybe you create another section for students to respond, you could link the next item to the next resource. Take advantage of the fact that they are able to visit resources and then respond within your document. My last tip is to take advantage of headers. Headers allow you to create some organization in the document so that way people can quickly visit different sections of the document. So for example, I'll go up here and I'm going to click in that space. I'm going to say that this is group one and then I'm going to move down to my next group and I'm going to put in this space here, change it to header, heading one specifically, group two, and then I'm going to make this one, obviously, group three. All right, and so I have these different headers, and what's fantastic is I can go to the top here, and I can do this a couple of different ways, depending on what you prefer. So I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to go to Document Outline, and it gives me instantly where these headers are. So here's group one, here's group two, here's group three. This allows me to quickly flip through these as well as your students. So you could even name these by what the content is about. You can even create subgroups. So if it was about some specific content, but I needed a subgroup, I could essentially just go one row below, change this from heading one to heading two, and I could say, when I do that, it adds it to the set of outlines over here, and it'll go straight to those locations. Now there's another way that I can do this. If I don't want it to be over here in the outline, another way that it, this exact same thing can be accomplished by going up here to insert, so tools, it's outline, insert, you can do it with a table of contents. I'm going to go over here, hit with blue links. This allows me to link directly to specific parts of the document like so. So if I want to see group two, I can do it just like that. I tend to like the tools and the document outline better than using the table of contents, but it's whatever your preference is in this process. So let's recap that. One, make sure you use tables, even tables within tables. Two, use Google Drawings. Make sure you go to Insert, Drawing, and piece together a graphic so that way you can put all kinds of charts, graphs, and other important information. And then three, make sure that you link your stuff. So link to important resources. And then the last tip is make sure that you use headers. So go up to the normal text, change it to a heading, and then you can either use the document outline or you can insert the table of contents to access all the headers very quickly.